this is David. Welcome to the channel. It's been a little while, but I'm back. And this channel is all about helping us develop our musical voice. This thing right here, the guitar, is just an instrument. And if you want to become a guitar player, this is not the channel. But if you want to use this to express yourself, use this as what it is, a tool to express the music that is inside of you, then you're in the right place. Before we get started into this lesson, we're gonna talk about what you just heard here. I want to invite you to check out my free music theory DNA course. It's gonna help you go further, understand the concept a lot better. I highly recommend you do it. It's completely free. Guitarinfusion.com, check it out. You're gonna love it. All right, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about rhythm playing. But I'm not talking about a rhythm playing as in, I'm just gonna play the chords and let the, the lead guitar player, if there is one, just kind of play over it. That's not what we're doing here. We're not even talking about chords as in, here's a G major seven chord or a B dominant seven or whatever it is. We're not gonna approach it that way. And that's going to free you quite a bit. This concept is based on the fact that chords are just a series of notes put together. Okay, so is this a chord? Sure. It doesn't sound good though, right? In order for the chords you're playing to make sense and tell a musical story, they need to be part of a system, a scale. I like to see scales as alphabets. So let's say that we're speaking in a particular language, the language of Mixolydian, for example. What does that mean in musical terms? It means that we're gonna use the Mixolydian scale and use that scale, which is a series of notes, to create chords extracted from that series of notes. All the notes that all the musicians are gonna play, including the bass player, the keyboard player, if there is one, and you, the guitar player, you're gonna select from these notes, the notes that are found within that scale. In this case, we're gonna use a mixolydian. See, a lot of players kind of get bogged down into thinking that I need to harmonize that particular scale and build chords that follow certain rules, like taking the, the root, the third, the fifth, and all that, that stuff. Yeah, you could do that, but you could also do this. So in front of you, you have the A Mixolydian scale. It's laid out all over the fretboard, right? So we've got a big, big scale here. Now I could select any of these notes and I'm going to be in A Mixolydian. And because we're in A Mixolydian, that means that the instruments you're gonna hear are gonna play notes from the scale that we just saw on the screen. In this case, we have drums and bass. The bass is just playing notes from that A Mixolydian scale that you just saw. And as a guitar player, I could pick any of the notes that you saw on the fretboard, and they're going to work with what's going on here. We're speaking the same language, using the same alphabet. And I really do mean any. I could play the obvious one, like maybe this shape. We've all seen that before. But maybe the non-conventional ones, like maybe something like, like this. A little different. Okay, let's take that a little further. How about uh, this one? It's found within the scale. It sounds kind of cool. And there's a lot of those that you can find. You can make some fingerings that are a little different than what you would be used to. Also, I'll try something like this, for example. So that's the concept, but there's a little more to it. There's something missing. Because yes, if you just build chords using that big uh, fretboard, uh, visualizing the full fretboard, extracting notes, yeah, you're gonna speak the same language, but you're missing an element, and that element is gonna be rhythm. So the very first thing that you should do in order to implement this, besides visualizing the whole fretboard, is to internalize the groove. So we're gonna to listen to this again and engage your body as you listen. So, get the beat. 
And I talked about this before, but you're gonna try to come up with a subdivision in your mind. In my experience, 16th notes is gonna be the best way to go. So that's four notes per beat. So you have this going on in the back of your mind. You're gonna visualize your fretboard. And anytime you play a combination of these notes, you're gonna make sure it lands on one of those. But don't just play. That's gonna be boring. Just have that in the back of your mind. the fretboard and having that subdivision in your mind. Those two things together are going to allow you to sound a lot more musical. It's going to free you to actually speak music instead of thinking through the rules. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that studying the quote unquote proper way of building chords is a bad thing. But if that's all you do, you're going to miss out on the expression part, the living an experience, a musical experience. And that, in my opinion, is the best way to do it. Plus, to be honest, it sounds a lot better, I think, a lot more organic than thinking in terms of A dominant seven. G over A. All that thing kind of slows you down. See, playing guitar is more of an organic thing. You can always backtrack and look at these different chords and visualize them and try to understand how they're built. But don't do that when you're actually playing. When you're playing, just play. If you want a little bit of help understanding why this works so well, you should check out the free DNA course. It's really gonna cover all of that. It's gonna open new doors. And I know that because of all the feedback that I've gotten. See, I've ran this course for the last six years and made it completely free. There's actually a new version that is available. I updated all the videos, and I'm getting so many emails of students telling me how the DNA has helped them evolve and understand what they're playing. So check it out, it's at guitarinfusion.com. Thanks for watching this. I'll be back with another lesson really soon, now that I have the studio set up. And if you wanna stick around for another video, you can do that right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.